Hey, oh, and we're back. Chapter 13. You ready for this? All right. So let's try this. Where are they? They were there a minute ago. Where'd they go? Here we go. Black Pearl, chapter 13. About dawn, I reached the entrance to the lagoon. The tide was out, but it had started to change, and I had trouble steering the boat down the dark channel. As I came to the rocks the gar that guard the cave, I found that the lagoon lay hidden under a mantle of red mist, so heavy that the far shore where the old man lived could not be seen. It was then that I heard a sound. Perhaps I heard nothing and only felt that someone or something was behind me. During the long night, I had thought little of the Monte Diablo, and when I did it was without fear. A creature who could change his form and become a living person and go into town and even into the church, as the old man said, whose friends among the sharks and fish told him everything they saw or heard on the sea? Surely this creature would know that I had the great pearl and was returning it to his cave. Still, from time to time, as I rode southward in the night, I scanned the moonlit waves for the monstrous bat-like form, half smiling as I did so. Behind me in the mist, I heard the sound again, then above the hissing of the tide came a voice I knew at once. Good morning, mate, he said. But you are slow with the oars. I followed you out from La Paz and dawdled most of the night and waited and fell asleep. Does the pearl weigh you down? What pearl? I asked, calmly as I could. The Seviano laughed. Ha ha! The gray one, of course, he said. Listen, and let us be truthful. I know that you stole the big one. I stood at the door and saw you steal it. And I also saw the bulge in your pocket when you came out from the church. Since we are truthful and you will wonder why I watched you, I must say that I was there because I came to steal the pearl myself. Does that surprise you? No, I said. Two thieves, Seviano said and laughed again. Ha <laughs> ha. Now that we both speak the truth as thieves, do you have the pearl? I could not see him through the heavy mist, nor could I judge where his boat was. And if you do not have the pearl, he said, then tell me, is this where you found it? His voice became hard. To both questions, give me a truthful answer. Now the red mist parted a little where we were floating and the sun broke through. Seviano was between me and the Montes cave, much closer than I had thought him to be. In his, mind, in his hand was a knife, and the sun glittered on it. We looked at each other, and I saw by his face that he meant to use the knife if the need arose. Still, I said nothing. Do you think that I blame you for stealing the great pearl? He said. For all the good it did, it might better have been given to the devil. Nor do I blame you for wishing to keep the place where you found it secret. But hand it over, mate, and we shall talk then about other things. He put the knife in his belt. His boat moved nearer until it touched the prow of mine. He held out his hand to take the pearl. The cave was dark, yet not far distant, so I could see it clearly. I took the pearl from my shirt as if to give it to him. But as he put out his hand to receive it, I threw the pearl into the air, beyond him into the water, into the mouth of the cave. It was an unwise thing to do, for the pearl had no quicker left my hand than the Seviano was in the sea, swimming beneath the water. I picked up the oars and turned the heavy boat against the current, thinking that I would row to the far end of the lagoon and seek the old man's help. Before I could straighten the boat, the Seviano came to the surface, grasped one of the oars and then the gunwale. In his hand was the great black pearl. You toss it to the devil and the devil picks it up, he said, climbing over the side. Now we find my boat. It had drifted off the tide, 
drifted off on the tide. The boat was smaller than mine, and as we overtook it, I saw that it was filled with provisions for a voyage, food, a jug of water, a fishing line and hooks, and an iron harpoon, among other things. The Seviano stepped into the boat and motioned for me to follow, not knowing what he meant for me. I did not move. Hurry, mate, or we'll miss the tide, he said. We have many leagues to go. I am rowing ashore, I answered him. I have business with Soto Luzon. The Seviano slipped the knife from his belt. I looked toward the far shore and hoped that the old man had heard our talk and had come to the lagoon to see who we were, but the red mist still hid the shore from view. Again, the Seviano motioned me into the boat, this time with his threatening knife. I had no choice except to obey him. Sit down, be comfortable, he said, handing me a pair of oars. He stripped off his singlet and wrapped it round the pearl and seated himself in back of me. Row, he said. The mist had begun to rise from the water. I took a last look toward the shore, but it was deserted. Then I felt the sharp point of the knife pressing against my shoulder. I picked up the oars and began to row aimlessly. Toward the sea, Saviano said, because we go in that direction. And why do we go in that direction? Since you will ask this sooner or later, I shall tell you now. We go to the city of Guaymas. What do we do there? We sell the great pearl. We sell it together, you and I. For the name of Salazar is known among the pearl dealers in Guaymas. And for this reason, we shall sell it for ten times the sum I could get if I sold it alone. He was silent, busying himself with the oars. I heard him set the oars in their locks and thought, now there is a chance for me to slip over the side and swim to the nearest shore. He must have read my thoughts, for again, I felt the knife pressing against my back. Since I cannot row and watch at the same time, he said, it is you who must do the rowing. So put your mind to it, mate. The tide turns and does not wait. Slowly, I pulled the oars, thinking a hundred thoughts in desperation, but to no avail, for the knife was at my back and I could only do what I was bidden. Once outside the channel, too far for me to swim ashore, the Seviano set his course eastward across the Vermilion and raised a ragged sail. Okay. So, Seviano has the pearl now and he has Ramon as well and he wants to go and sell the pearl. So let's talk about this chapter real quick. We can pull up our notes here. Yep, there we go. Perfect. All right. So dawdled is a fun word. Say it with me. Dawdled. And yes, if you're at home, it's okay. Say it out loud. Dawdled. Dawdled. All right. Dawdle, think of like a little kid and how they just kind of walk along slowly. To dawdle. It means to kind of walk in a slow, lingering way. No hurry, no rush. All right, the knife was at my back and I could only do what was bidden. So you can see here in the picture, the knife is right at the back. This word bidden is a fun word. Say with me, bidden, bidden. It's the past tense of the word bid. And in this context, bid means what you are told to do. So he had a knife at his back and he had to do what he was told. All right, we are not in class, so let's just go ahead and review this real quick. Chapter 12, which we read yesterday, Ramon stole the pearl from the church. He wanted to tell the truth, but he thought maybe the Monte Diablo did have power. So he took a boat and he went to Monte Diablo's cave where he was going to return the pearl. But in chapter 13, the Seviano followed him Ramon throws the pearl into the ocean. The Seviano dives after it and finds the black pearl. And now he puts a knife to Ramon's shoulders and says, row the boat and we're gonna go sell this pearl and make lots of money. So kind of a scary time for Ramon. All right, that finishes chapter 13.
I hope that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed reading it. I know it's kind of a strange way to do this. We're coming to the end of the story. I wish we could read it together, but hang in there, guys. We can get through all this. So until later, uh, take care. We'll say goodbye.